Hello everyone. In our study of perspectives in development of human geography, today we are trying to understand the concept of systems analysis in human geography. What is meant by systems? System is defined to be that coherent unit, that comprehensive unit, which involves elements and interactive link. The genesis of the term system in the scientific reference is related to the work of ecologist. Ecologist identified the genesis of term system to understand ecological setup, the interactive link and their constituent. It is from ecological work that it was being taken up by biogeographers and eventually in human geography. So Ludwig von Bertel Frey is considered to be the propounder of first systems analysis. I'll, I'll use the expression systems approach. So ecologists identified systems approach which was taken up in human geography by the propounders, supporters of neo-positivism, functionalism or quantitative tradition from that perspective. What are the constituents of system? System incorporate three components and three aspects relates to each other. What are the three components of system? System should always have elements. System should always have links between the elements and system should have links of it with the environment. Once I take these three components, I can easily comprehend it from the perspective of both physical and human geography. Syllabus reads systems analysis in human geography. Question has been asked in geomorphology about geomorphological system. So I can utilize it even in the physical geography. What is important is these three components are assessed as three aspects. Every system is related to structure, function, and development. What is meant by structure? Structure of a system is the sum total of elements and interactive link. Then what is function? Function is the interactive link with the surrounding. So if I have to integrate structure with three components, I'll say elements and links between the elements will become the structure of a system and the link of a system with environment will become its function. Once I have taken this demarcation, what I need to understand is the third component, third aspect. What is the third aspect of a system? It's called development. Now what is meant by development? Development stands for dynamism. Development stands for dynamism. Everything and anything that relates to human geographical system will be dynamic enough for us to explore in this perspective. In sense that I should not treat system as a static unit. Scholars like Minshul, scholars like Berry, Chorley, Peter Haggett, David Harvey, who have been the prominent supporter of quantitative tradition in geography, have strongly supported system as a fundamental framework, as an abstract framework, which is not reality, but helps us to explore reality. And then in the study of systems analysis, what comes as the cascading sequence is defined types of the system. Geographically, systems are classified on the basis of function and on the basis of its morphology. When I say on the basis of function, so I have got at least 5 plus 3 systems. And why do I say 5 plus 3? These systems are credited to scholars like Landong, Belloc, and these systems are credited to Chorley and Kennedy like scholars. So if I have to take the reference of these systems, I'm picking up the contribution of Belloc and also Langton. These are the scholars who have given us the system. Now functional system includes one series or sequential system. 
output of one becomes input of other. Parallel system, output of one becomes input of more than one system. Feedback system, output of one can become input of the same system. As soon as I pick up diagram to understand the types of functional systems, category becomes very evident. Where is the validity? The propounders as Belloc and Lantong has given us examples predominantly from economic geography. And if I try to attempt it, what is the example of series or sequential system? Vertical integration of industries where there is no recycling. What is meant by feedback system? Feedback system includes recycling. I have got the feedback relation. I have got the inverse relation. And basically it is with feedback system that we geographers identify two very important aspects that must not be missed out. And which are the morphogenetic and morphostatic. Morphogenetic is what is called positive system. Morphostatic is what is called negative system. What exactly is meant by them? Morphogenetic system is that system that sustains progress. And morphostatic is which is self-sufficient, sort of a static kind of orientation. Negative feedback system can be complemented with detrimental effect. Unsustainable agricultural practices will adversely influence agriculture. You know, that kind of negative feedback system. But as per definition, what is morphogenetic system? Morphogenetic is that feedback system which tends to maintain the dynamism of system. And morphostatic negative, it is self-regulating system that restricts this further growth. These three functional categories of the system, if I just quickly clean it out so that it becomes more evident, if these three, removing this part, if these three systems are taken into account, why they are considered to be the theoretical types of system in the functional category, why do they represent theoretical type of system? Basically, because they represent two simple interactive links to be applied in practicality. Practicality is that we have strong interactive links with the complex correlation. In sense that if I have to just compare food chain versus food web, I don't think there should be any price for guessing which is more real. It is by default food web. But while learning, what do we take to our stride? It's food chain. Apply that logic. Parallel, feedback, and sequential system are considered to be theoretical because of the simplicity of the networking that has been shown here. Practically, they involve complex interplay of the factor. And that is where complex and complex compound systems are distinguished and complex complex compound system theoretically to be distinguished as complex will have combination of all the three and complex compound will involve additional interactive links or complex compound is much stronger interactive links with more complexity compared to complex feedback system or complex parallel system or complex series or sequential system. So they owe practicality because they more corresponds to web rather than chain. And when I take the example of functional system as open, partially open and closed, we are giving the prominence to the scholars like Chorley and Kenny. Now these scholars have given us the classification of systems predominantly on the basis of their morphology. So morphological classification cannot be ignored by default. And if I have to take morphological classification, we say every system can be called structural system, 
Some system are cascading in nature and some systems are controlled systems. Systems analysis in human geography is inclusive of morphological system as given to us by Chorley and Kennedy. Along with it, it is inclusive of closed, partially open, an open system given to us by the same scholars. What is the elementary difference between the two? Functional system as open. I have interactive links of the elements of the different system with each other as if they are interacting within. And that is the reason when I say globalized economic setup, I take cosmopolitan cultural identity, I relate it to open system. It is more evident or practical today. I take a step backward and talk about partially open system. Partially open system is a system where Components have got strong interactive relation with each other within a system. However, they don't have the isolated or existing interactive link with the elements of other system. However, two systems incorporate interlinks with each other. If I take this into account, I'm talking about tariff barrier, very important, very good case, China and US trade war. Indian attempt to minimize Chinese dumping and thereby the tariff barriers are excellent economic example for me to cite the case of partially open system. Closed system where there is no interactive link between the two neighboring system is difficult to find in social sciences like geography because in geographical study what is the most common and elementary thing that we talk about is that we always have everything in the interactive interrelation. However, primitive fourth world community, the no-go zone strategy that we follow as international and international community, excellent case, we can put forth that as example. So when we talk about functional categories of system, the first thing that I need to be aware of, how many systems we believe in. So we believe in number one, sequential, number two, parallel, Number three, feedback. Number four, complex. Number five, complex compound. Number six, open. Partially open, closed. So I have got eight different types of systems. If I'm aware of it, I can easily fit an example to prove the validity of systems approach. Validity or utilization of systems analysis in human geography have been time and again asked questions. But what is important for us to sustain is that as geographers, we cannot be ignorant of, let me come to the side, we cannot be ignorant of structural cascading and control system. What is the point that has been referred here? Every system will occupy certain space. Does every system will be example of structural system? Nature of structure will vary. Like morphology of rural settlement is different from morphology of urban settlement. But both of them makes example of a structural system. Some system has got pulsating nature. They keep on growing outward. Rural activity don't grow, but industrial activity grows. Rural settlement don't grow, but urban settlement do develop urban sphere of influence. So you can easily take up the account of that some structural system has cascading nature. And then what is controlled system? Controlled system can be pinpointed with two aspects to it. And if, if I justify these aspects, my answer becomes 10% complete. Control where I want to contain and control where I want to inject. Simple two things. What is control? Controlling the growth momentum where it is becoming exponential, out of manageable reach. CPCB in the red areas of comprehensive environment pollution index. 
do not provide eia compliance or green certificate is excellent example of containing and what is injecting injecting is regional planning strategies you know when we take the understanding of perspectives in development of human geography or for that matter any theory and every theory in human geography the most fundamental thing that we need to think about is number 1 who propounded it number 2 what are the principal clauses that relates to it and the most important thing where do i see the validity of it and as soon as you judge that validity you will not find that these topics as general perception among students is is out of box topic it is not it is as integrated part of geography as is economic geography or geomorphology or climatology i just need to develop that comprehension that it has its defined overlap with what is our content matter i'll continue to give you support on different other heads of geographical thought do take the reference of this outline of systems analysis and refer the sources that has been always recommended it will give you the further edge to make sense with rationality of geographical thought all the very best to all of you